<laughs> I think we're back on as yeah. trail. So um, this is a poet, a Palestinian poet, Mamun Darwish, and uh, he says, exile is more than a geographical concept. You can be an exile in your homeland, in your house, or in a room. And I think many of us here have probably actually felt that, especially in our work or uh, social dynamics. Um, this is Asa, by the way. Um, he may be wandering around just a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to do it this way. Um, so what I wanted to talk about was uh, I come from a background of art, um, but I entered the startup world and the tech world and kind of had quite a shock in doing so and the dynamics that are there. Uh, and so one of the things that I noticed um, was the ways that uh, corporations, especially when they felt, or, and companies and small companies, felt that when they were um, perceived, were there perceived threats, how they would actually close rank and isolate uh, specific individuals. Um, my name is Susie Lee. I was the CEO and co-founder of Siren, which was a dating app that we tried to humanize a space. I'll talk a little bit, little bit more about that. As I said, I'm an uh, artist and also an educator, um, and hopefully some kind of boundary crosser. Um, so this is a very typical kind of theme that you'll see, which is something about why can't Silicon Valley solve its diversity problem? You will hear this over and over again, a lot of hand wringing, and then nothing gets done. Um, this is the problem. Um, and I saw this over and over again. Um, and so what they'll do is they will go to their HR staff and they'll say, this might be a problem. This is actually more of a PR and optics thing. And so what we'll do is we'll make sure that we have at least the token. Um, and what that looks like is oftentimes something like this. Um, I found it pretty offensive, and I also found it like, well, you're actually asking this person um, not to be able to succeed in an organization and be able to actually effectively self-advocate or be able to actually change the dynamic in that organization. Um, so at first, though, when you get hired, especially in a small company um, or something like where I see a lot of startups, you're actually hired, you are the diverse candidate, and now you're part of the club, it's great optics, until you're not. And so the question is, and I'm not even sure that I necessarily have um, the answers, and this is actually something where I'd love this conversation to keep going, is when the club is threatened, who closes the ranks and who is left out? Um, so I've seen this happen over and over again, and I've had many people share stories about this. Um, and even if the reasons oftentimes seem legitimate as to why someone has been exiled, the, re the effect is the same, which it reinforces systemic discrimination and this idea of a modern day exile. So I wanted to talk quickly about kind of what my experience was um, having started this startup. So Siren was actually something that was trying to change not only the dating culture, which is, as most of you know, if you have ever been single, um, pretty awful um, for anyone who is differently able or um, marginalized. Um, and we also tried to change the startup work culture. So my co-founder and I were one of the few women of color in tech. Um, and one of the few founders and executives that we actually experienced. When you dig into who starts what the major uh, dating apps, these are the founders. And everything about their posture and everything about what they look like is in fact uh, true. Um, <laughs> they're pretty awful human beings. Um, so it wasn't surprising to me that this was actually an incredibly non-inclusive space um, and one that would actually be something where they say, oh, we hired you because of your skill set, but actually we're going to fire you or let you go because you're not a good fit for, your, for the work culture. And you will hear this over and over and over again. So it becomes really toxic and it becomes something where when you have your next interview, you're not actually sure how to navigate. Um, because you're like, well, uh, yeah, if, if I was qualified, then why is it that I wasn't part of the work culture or the fit? And it was like, well, you were trouble because you were someone who wasn't looking like that. Um, one of the things that we specifically set out to do was to really um, advocate for community and a community building. So 
we were, our, our premise was that if you start to ask questions and difficult questions, that this was a way to get to know people. And our question of the day hosts were local Seattle creatives that came from all kinds of walks of life. It was LGBTQ, it was um, both men and women, it was, all, it was of all spectrums. Um, and racially, we were also really, really sensitive and socioeconomically. So to the best of our ability, we wanted our question of the day host to kind of represent the kind of community that we wanted within our app. And in fact, we did get a lot of press about that because it was unique and different in that way. However, what we kept finding was this over and over and over again. Um, and so unfortunately, uh, we had to close. And we closed about a month ago, and it was um, tremendously uh, frustrating. Um, our community rallied, and uh, on the last day, we actually asked the question, like, uh, what did you love best about Siren? Our, uh, the best feature that we felt was uh, you, um, which was our community. And the responses that we got, like, actually brought me to tears. Um, and it was very antithetical to what I feel like this was. Um, so basically, this is kind of the, the stew that we're working in. Um, so, let's say you get hired into a company that's mostly like this. And everything is okay until you sense there's actually a shift in the winds. Maybe there's uh, an executive change, maybe there's a PR crisis, uh, maybe there's some kind of investor issue, whatever it is, the question is, in that circumstance, how do you protect yourself and is it actually possible? Um, one of, the, one of uh, the friends that I had, she was actually in the investment banking world, which I think is even worse, and she said, if there are two women that are going up from, for promotion against, um, say, uh, a group of men, uh, the women will actually attack each other because they know that the other woman has the least number of allies and the, the weakest network. This is pretty awful, but over and over again, this is what they said was happening. Um, that's quite a pretty like sobering reality and something that at this point in time and with this kind of conference, with this kind of group, it's like, let's see if we can change that. So one of the first things is you don't actually have to feel pressure to represent. At a meeting or you know when you're in a workplace, it can be exhausting to be like, hey, you're the ex. What do you think about blah? So when that happens, you can simply say, you know, at this point in time, this is my job at this, uh, at this particular uh, company, and so you know, I prefer not to necessarily represent or be the uh, spokesperson for whatever it is that you think that I am at this point in time. Um, when I say document and ask for documentation, it's not simply when you feel like there's actually trouble, but there are a lot of uh, startups and small companies that are kind of casual and loosey-goosey about things. And when that happens, that's oftentimes a red flag about how that company is actually structured. So even with Siren, when we had a very, very small team, uh, my co-founder actually was really good about saying, please over-communicate. In other words, when you're asking for something, when you are expecting something to be done, make sure it's in writing so that that person can respond because if there is an issue, then we can always go back to that document and say, actually, this is where the problem was. So if you're for with a company that's like, eh, we like to do it more face-to-face -face and just like, you know, on some kind of other uh, casual method, um, I, I would run, honestly. Um, because asking for that kind of documentation, whether it's an email or even in a Slack uh, chat uh, window, it's simply a way of saying this is a company that respects um, not only your time and your efforts, but also like clear communication. Um, and then the third one is um, just observing the hierarchies in the place. So there are a lot of people who will, especially in a startup, um, and especially, um, unfortunately, uh, straight white men, who will think that they have a lot more power in these structures than they do. So if you keep your eyes open and actually know who those decision makers are, those are the people that you really have to like find as being your allies. And you should trust your gut. So there's a lot of people who will be really loud and who will be like the attention getters, but they may not be the ones who actually are in the end uh, the people who will make the decisions to um, be able to protect you. Um, I think the other one is 
understand the kind of culture of what trust cultivation in the organization look like, looks like. And so what that means may not always jive with your personality, but for example, if trust cultivation is after work gatherings, make sure that you're invited to those things, right? If it's, uh, you know, if it's like they all go to lunch together and you're not invited, make sure that that's part of it where you're like, hey, you know, I'm free too, would love to join you guys for lunch. Um, you know, whether or not you do the work well, you know, that's one thing, but the other part is whether or not they actually see you as someone that's really integral and part of the kind of the group that they're in. Um, deepen and keep strengthening your networks. Um, this is really, unfortunately, your best defense. Um, if you have one ally, that's great, but if you have 20 that are advocating for you, that's a lot better. And so, However that structure works in your organization, that's super, super important. Um, and also, the allies are not only necessarily within your department or within your team, but also across. So when people can see your value, um, even if they're not necessarily ones that work next to you, that's really important. Um, one of the things that I found really complicated, um, especially in startups, um, in a small company, is there's a sort of a tricky thing about intersectionality and allies. So for example, if you are a woman of color, do you side with the women or the people of color? And you may think, I want to do both, but oftentimes when there's a closing of a rank, you will suddenly realize that people are choosing one or the other. There's also maybe, for example, it might not even be about race or gender identification. It might be about socioeconomics. It might be about background. So the tricky thing about intersectionality is that when you figure out who your allies are, you have to understand also on what vector those allies are operating on. Because it can actually be sort of uh, sometimes a pretty big betrayal when, for example, um, this is what I saw personally in the startup world, was that men of every uh, race would oftentimes bond together. So even though there was another man of color in the room, he was not at some point in time ultimately an ally of another woman um, or someone who was um, identifying as a woman. So, so it was something where I, I don't have an answer for that, but I just know there's something tricky about that kind of intersectionality and how you identify yourself. Now on the other side, we can ask like what can white and non-marginalized or people who are, have a position of power do to actually support? So I think the first thing of course is to recognize the systemic privileges in your organization. Um, and to be able to speak candidly and also in private with people who are like-minded on the topics of race, socioeconomics, gender, and marginalized communities. And to do it in a place that actually feels safe for you as well. Um, and also to be able to help foster an open and uh, public dialogue that doesn't demand folks being the educators all the time. Um, one of the most important things that actually is not unfortunately this slide is also when we talk about allyship, there's one that's directed actually at the individual that you're trying to be an ally to, but there's also a sense of being a sponsor. And a sponsor is a really key advocate that actually says, in meetings in which that person is not present, you are constantly bringing up their name, making sure that this person gets credit, advocating for them when a position is up for promotion. Sponsorship is actually something that many, many uh, people absolutely need to have from uh, sort of that insider community. So if you can step up and do that part especially, that's absolutely one of the most important things that you can do um, to support. So in a company, when you actually have these things where you can say you can trust to have uh, potentially like difficult conversations, there's an integrity to be able to follow through and to be able to say that this is something that we're committed to, um, that when you're closing ranks, you don't do it kind of arbitrarily where it seems like it's always the person that's always been the outsider um, who's, uh, who stays on the outside, and then you're accountable. Um, this is something that I think we can start to work towards. Um, and ultimately, of course, these kind of behaviors, when unchecked, impacts the company and the organization, not only in their everyday work environment, but their ability to attract future talent and maintain productivity. So one of the things that we had always hoped with Siren was we said, even though there's a lot of tech bros out there, um, if we can actually compete on the same level as them, then the one thing that we knew we could do 
10 times better than them is actually to be able to attract um, the most interesting and qualified diverse candidates and we would be able to retain them because we would provide the kind of hopefully a uh, safe work environment that they would actually um, uh, want to stay. Um, so thank you very much and uh, any quick questions or comments?